Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you to the webinar. My name is Sonam Bhutia, and I manage the administration for ATOI. Just a few points to be followed on Zoom. I would kindly request everyone to put their mic in mute to ensure there's no disturbance, and the meeting is conducted smoothly. As a host, I do have the option to put everyone in mute, and will be doing so whenever required. If you have any questions for our speakers, please do mention it in the chat box, or you can raise it when the house opens up for the Q&A session. And uh, as um, our webinar is being live streamed on Facebook as well. And the program for the webinar for today is as follows. We have the welcome address by our ATI Honorary Secretary, Mr. Vinay Cole, followed by the introduction of all Nippon Airways, followed by introduction of Attractive Japan DMC and introduction of Experiences DMC, followed by the presentation, uh, presentation by Na Japan National Tourism Organization and by all Nippon Airways. I would now like to uh, call upon our Honorary Secretary, Mr. Vinay Cole, to welcome the house. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sonam. Uh, can you hear me, Sonam? Yes, sir, loud and clear. Thank you. Friends, a very warm welcome. I thank you all for joining us for this webinar. Each and everyone, whether it's here on Zoom or by our various social media handles. Thank you, Team JNTO, and especially Nivedita for pursuing this with us. Uh, JNTO, in fact, had been wishing to have this with us for long. As uh, ATUI, we have uh, time and again at every possible platform reinstated the role and importance of adventure tourism in the overall tourism cosmos. How adventure tourism has the potential to transform a destination in the most sustainable and responsible manner about its reach in terms of economy, how it provides employment in the remotest corners, and the way it makes money is the last mile. At Adventure Tourism, uh, globally hurtles to be a $1.6 trillion industry by 2026. COVID-19 pandemic has, in fact, given it a different push. It has made people think, rethink, I would say, the kind of holidays they want to take. Travelers nowadays seek more outdoor active and experiential travel for their holidays. Uh, Japan has always been a country of great interest for the world, be it any vertical or topic. So the thought of knowing about its adventure potential sounded very exciting to us, and we thus planned this webinar for you all. Also, ATUI wishes to promote sustainable, safe, and responsible tourism, not just in India, but all across the globe. And hence, to host this webinar also felt very natural to us. And after all, one of the mission statements of ATUI is to have its members organize adventure tours in all seven continents. Japan is a country with unique culture and cutting edge technology. One can enjoy varied landscapes, volcanoes, mountains, rivers, oceans, and a lot more with changing backgrounds, following the natural transition of four seasons. We today look forward to learn more about Japan, its potential of adventure tourism through this webinar. Thank you, and I welcome you all once again. Over to you, Sonam. Thank you, sir. I would now like to call upon uh, the uh, All Nippon Airways team for the introduction. Over to ANA team. Thank you so much, uh, Sonam and Vinayak, uh, for uh, letting us uh, introduce ourselves from our team. Uh, formerly, uh, I'm from All Nippon Airways, and uh, we are operating from Delhi. We are based out of Gurgaon, and I have my colleague with me, Ms. Nitika and Ms. Monisha. So they are uh, handling their reservations and everything. So primarily, I'm from sales. Uh, Nitika, can you please uh, say hi to everyone? Hi, hello, everyone. This is Nitika from ANA. Yeah. We are glad to be here and uh, impart all kind of information that you may require during the webinar. Thank you. Okay, I uh, just wanted to give uh, give you a brief idea that uh, what is ANA. Uh, primarily, ANA is a launch customer and the largest operator of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and making ANA the biggest Dreamliner owner in the world. Uh, we are a part of Star Alliance since uh, 1999 and, and uh, we have a joint venture agreements with United Airlines, Lufthansa, German Airlines, Swiss International Airlines and Australian Airlines, which uh, gives us a truly gro uh, global presence. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Now I would like to uh, call the team of Attractive Japan for the introduction. Over to the Attractive Japan team. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. 
My name is Hiroyuki Sato, working for Atlantic Japan. We are, unlike all Nippon Airways, a very new company founded only nine years ago. We initially started as a development officer uh, to work with local government, especially uh, countryside, because as you might have heard, many of Japanese uh, countryside are struggling with population decline and also economic slump something. So we went there to help their uh, development, uh, economic development, and then uh, some of the development uh, we did converted into tourism. So now our programs are very much uh, focusing on community-based tourism. Obviously, we have quite a lot of program in Tokyo, Kyoto, or big cities, but we highly value the importance of community-based tourism and also interaction with local people and travelers. Uh, later on, I'm going to explain more detail about our program. So please stay on and enjoy the occasion. Thank you, Matindi. Thank you. I would like to now invite uh, the experts team for the introduction. Hi guys, uh, my name is Ryan and I'm from Experiences and uh, we are located in Japan and uh, uh, we mainly cr uh, create uh, the experiences for high net worth individuals. Um, so uh, sometimes we just like invite uh, you know, Hollywood stars and uh, those uh, famous, star uh, famous people in, in Japan. And uh, we mainly like, you know, focusing on the cultural experiences, but uh, we also do um uh activity to uh, tourism as well so uh you know i'll just share uh, some uh, plans later so um uh thanks for inviting me thank you uh, i would like to now call upon the japan national tourism organization for the presentation over to you nebudeta hi everyone i'm nebudeta i'm taking care of uh, trade relations in japan national tourism organization <clears throat> <laughs> Just a Sorry. Uh, so uh, I will uh, quickly go to my presentation. We are based out of Delhi and I have shared my email ID and phone number in the chat box. Whoever wants to contact me later on for a different kind of presentation or other aspects of tourism, uh, please contact me. Uh, you can see my screen, everyone. So now you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay. So today we are going to talk about Japan and the direct airlines to Japan and the most popular routes which are selling from the Indian market and experiences around it experiences in Hokkaido and Okinawa. These are the two new places which we are trying to promote in the Indian market. These are very famous for the foreign markets. And then we will talk about the Japan Specialist Program. All of you know where Japan is, but I will just want to tell you like Japan consists of four main island, the Northern Island of Hokkaido. Then this is Honshu, then Shikoku, and then Kyushu, and a small island of Okinawa in the southern part. So Japan is almost around three and a half hours ahead of India in time. And one yen is approximately like 0.7. So whenever I tell you a price in Japanese yen, you convert it to Indian rupee by multiplying it by 0.7. They have two main holidays, Golden Week and Obun Week, uh, where the Japanese people also do their vacations. So uh, the vacations during this time may get costlier. And other big holidays are New Year and Christmas in Japan. The direct airlines are Japan Airlines and All Nippon Airways and Air India. 
Japan Airlines flies out from Delhi and Bangalore. All Nippon Airways flies out of Delhi, Mumbai, and Chennai. We have other via flights also, like Singapore Airways, Thai Airways, Cathay Pacific, the Chinese carriers, Malaysian Airlines also. The flying time is like 8.5 hours while going and while coming back it is 10 hours. So the most popular route, first one is the Golden Route. The Golden Route consists of Tokyo. Uh, from Tokyo, you can go to Mount Fuji. This can be a day trip, but people who want to do a hike can stay near Mount Fuji and move to Hakone also after the hike. Hakone is very famous for uh, the lake and also the spas. And uh, there are also a very uh, lot of spas in Hakone which are suitable for Indian people also. From Mount Fuji, people can travel to Kyoto. Kyoto is a city where people can enjoy the old culture, uh, temples, and also uh, like wearing kimono and enjoying the uh, alley walks and uh, so on. From Kyoto, you can go to Osaka. Staying in Kyoto will be a little bit expensive because it is a very popular place among the tourists. Uh, Otherwise, you can also book a ryokan, which is a very typical Japanese yen uh, in, in Kyoto. Otherwise, uh, people who are looking for economical option can move to Osaka. From Osaka, and they can go to Osaka by bus or by train. From Osaka, you can go to Hiroshima. Hiroshima is historically famous, all of you know. So today I will talk about the experiences around the Golden Tree the adventures and experiences around the Golden Route. So as you know that Mount Fuji is very popular and even among the Indians, the Mount Fuji is very popular and uh, it's, it's always has been a center of curiosity. People can do a paragliding over here and uh, it would cost around 8,000 Japanese yen for half day. And people can see Mount Fuji from uh, like really from the from very nearby places and they can fly by Mount Fuji, which will be really a um, like lifetime experience. And the name of the school, which I would recommend would be uh, the Asaga, Asagiri Kogen Paragliding School. So I have all these links at the uh, end of my slide and all of you can take a picture of that. So this kind of experience you can have uh, near Mount Fuji while doing paragliding. And they also uh, do a free bus service, service from Shinjuku. Shinjuku is just at the heart of Tokyo. So from Tokyo to Asagiri Paraglide School, you can come uh, free of cost if you just uh, like let them know that you are planning a trip and you booked a trip. So from Shinjuku, you get a bus. Then um, mount, hiking in Mount Fuji is the dream of every hiker. So uh, people can do hiking in Mount Fuji from early July to early September. And there are three trails from the Shizuoka site to the top of Mount Fuji. And they can see a beautiful heavenly sunrise the next day. People can do a hot stay also. Uh, in the night uh, while doing the hiking and uh, it will be a guided tour and uh, there are path marks to mention each trail so that they don't lose their way and like doing adventure tourism in Japan is really very safe. Uh, this one night two day guided hiking would cost around 30,000 JPY and you can like see the detail in the below link. So this kind of view, you can see like you are above the cloud and we're seeing the sunrise. And this is the sunrise, as you know, that Japan has the first sunrise in the world. Japan is the land of sunrise. And there your guests will um, experience the first sunrise of the world when they do hiking in Mount Fuji. Then from Mount Fuji, they can uh, move to Kyoto. Uh, in Kyoto, they can enjoy the temples and the traditional lifestyle and maybe the next day they can do a river rafting. River rafting is definitely a summer activity and they can do this in Hozugawa river. Uh, they can reach the Hozugawa river from Kyoto JR station. It will take around 20 minutes to reach 
the Kameoka station. From there, it is like eight minutes walk and they can reach this place. And uh, the cost would be around 4,100 Japanese yen for adults. And uh, this is like really safe and it will be like a very beautiful experience as you can see. And uh, for uh, the aged couples or the aged people, uh, people can uh, take the, uh, uh, the leisurely boat ride also in Hosugawa River. And they can see the like uh, marine, the life, the ravine life, the forest, nature surrounding the river. And it will be a really pleasant trip for them. Then uh, from there, from Kyoto, you can go to Wakayama. So from the, uh, Kyoto has uh, two airports, KIX and ITM. So from KIX or KIX airport, people can go to Wakayama by bus uh, and it will take around one hour and the bus is available at the airport itself, would cost around 1200 Japanese yen. And Wakayama is very famous for uh, its monasteries and uh, like very old monasteries and natural beauty and the beautiful beach of Shirahama. Apart from that, people can do snorkeling in Wakayama and they have this um, Kuroshio current over there. So which will uh, give you an opportunity to uh, experience some like endemic species over there, which is like typically peculiar to Japan itself. They cannot see these uh, creatures anywhere else. So they can do that. Even first timers can do snorkeling as all of you know, and it would cost around 4,500 Japanese yen uh, for three hours of snorkeling. People who are enjoyed in scuba diving can do it at 10,500 Japanese yen for three hours of diving. And uh, as you can understand that the gears, gear rental and everything is included in this. This is a total package. Uh, then from there, you can, uh, from Wakayama, you can go to Hiroshima by train. And in Hiroshima, definitely Hiroshima is very important for uh, historical things and historical incidents. Uh, apart from that, people can enjoy at Sandankyo Gorge. So this is a three-tiered gorge. And uh, this is around one hour, 20 minutes away from Hiroshima bus center. And they can do a hiking over here, very easy hiking. People can do, even uh, we had a group of 30 people of Indian, 30 Indian people. They had their mice activities over here. So Indian food can also be uh, arranged over here. There are cafes over here. And there is also a boat ride in the Sandankyo Gorge where they can enjoy the rich nature and beautiful water life. So, uh, and the boat ride would cost around 500 Japanese yen. So this kind of experience you can get in Sandankyo Gorge. Then comes the Alpine route, the second popular route. And uh, here people can enjoy this kind of a snow wall. This is around 20 meters high. And um, this is 20 meters high from mid April to mid June. And uh, they can reach Alpine route by train from Tokyo. And the, the path is also very beautiful from Tokyo to the Alpine route. And then the Alpine route itself is, an, is a trail of activities. People can take a lot of like um, cable car or trolley bus and they can walk along this snow wall. They can watch the highest dam in Alpine route. And when they are, this, this will be like one day trip. And when they will be exiting the Alpine route, they can uh, take a JR Oito line and go to Hakuba for skiing. Japan is very famous for its powder snow and Europeans and Australians come to Japan to enjoy the snow activities. It is like powder snow and uh, very dry snow. So if people fall down, they don't hurt themselves or their clothes do not get wet. Um, so in Hakuba, people can enjoy skiing and the cost is also not very high. Uh, it is around like one day pass would be around 6,600 Japanese yen with unlimited chair car access and gear rental will be around 3,000 Japanese yen. And guides are also available. Novice people can learn skiing over here and then do the skiing, but uh, that would be a little bit uh, 
uh, expensive. But if you have a group, then they have special group pricing. Apart from skiing, people can do snowshoeing. That is also very interesting. People can go to very interesting corners uh, of the forest in Hakuba with the guide uh, in the snow, in the knee dip snow and can enjoy. And a snowshoeing guide is not that expensive as the skiing guide are. And then people can do snowboarding also over here. This, these are the winter activities, but in summer, if someone is visiting, they can do like camping, hiking, fishing over here. And you can see all the links over here and I will give an opportunity where you can take the photograph of the links. So this is, uh, this is a scenario, common scenery of um, Hakuba where people are doing skiing and um, it's like very easy, the slope. Uh, but Hokkaido is the main place where people do skiing, where a lot of foreigners also come and do skiing. Even celebrities from India went to Hokkaido for skiing. And as a result, Hokkaido has become a little bit expensive. But people who are uh, like looking forward to luxurious, uh, ex uh, luxurious experience and uh, very good resorts, they should go to Hokkaido. Uh, it, there are resorts like Niseko, Kiroro, Rusutsu. So these are like very high-end um, resorts and very good snow quality with like world-class equipments. And this would cost around 30,000 Japanese yen uh, where people can do skiing, snowboarding, snowmobiling. And this 30,000 Japanese yen again will uh, include your chair car um, access, then your gear rentals, then also your access to the kids section also where they can do snowmobiling like this and snowmobiling will always come with a kite then we have another activity called drift ties uh, it is also in hokkaido so this is like hokkaido drift ties activity people can walk on the uh, on the ocean the ocean freezes over here and uh, people can also jump into the ocean and float like a sea creature wearing a dry suit and um, this is around 40 minutes from Memenbatsu airport and the total experience with the cruising and jumping in the sea and uh, like walking on the ocean with the rentals and everything it will be around 10,000 Japanese yen. So this kind of experience you can have over there. Uh, then comes Okinawa. We are promoting Okinawa nowadays for um, honeymooners. And uh, so as you know that there is a trend nowadays uh, that do your activities together to strengthen the bond. So we are trying to promote that kind of trend with Okinawa. In Okinawa, people definitely can do snorkeling, diving, horse riding in the sea as Okinawa is a small island as I explained in the beginning of the presentation. So uh, you can do all these activities. Snorkeling in Okinawa is very attractive as it has like 200 varieties of reef and corals. Actually, people come from different parts of the world to Okinawa to study about corals and how to preserve corals. Then uh, they can do uh, snorkeling. Obviously, they can see the endemic fish and other kind of like very typical uh, creatures of uh, Japan over here and they can always uh, swim with whales and uh, uh, dolphins also in Maida Blue Cave. So snorkeling would cost around 5,000 Japanese yen and diving would cost around 8,500 Japanese yen and this includes your gears and like everything, uh, the boat with which you go and these are suitable for beginners also because there are places in Okinawa which are not much deep and shallow. So uh, people who try to do their first dive or first snorkeling can go to Japan. And as you know that Japan is very safe and um, the, even the hospitality concept they have, Umotenashi, that they will provide uh, with all the facilities before the guests can even ask for it. So they will also arrange for all the safety measures. So this kind of experience they can have. This is Blue Cave in Okinawa. You can know more about Japan by doing our Japan specialist program in visitjapan.org.in. I would request all of you to um, register over here and complete the course whenever you have time. Thank you so much. And uh, please take a screenshot of uh, these slides, this one. And there is one more uh, after this. Wait, give us, give us a minute.
Yes. Don't rush. No, no, no. <clears throat> Tell me if you are done. Thank you. Now this one also. Uh, Nibhidita sir. Yeah. Uh, somebody in the chat box has asked in case if uh, you can share the PowerPoint presentation with them. Huh, yes, I will mention that also that I cannot share the presentation uh, because uh, we have copyright issue because of the pictures used. Uh, that is why I have specially made these two slides so that you can have all the links. And uh, I have made the presentation from these links only. So if you go through these links, you will know more. And if you want to uh, like contact with me, I have provided my email ID and phone number in the chat box. So please note down that. Uh, and please, uh, like, please don't hesitate to call me or send me a mail. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nevedita. So, uh, OK, you're done with the presentation, right? Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, our next presentation is from All Nippon Airways. Over to you, Mr. Richardson. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, but Suna, my name is Robin Anderson. <laughs> Just to correct. Sorry, sorry. I'm no, I should not. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, without any further delay, I'll just share my screen with you all. Hope everyone is able to view the screen. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, most of the uh, points has already been covered by Nibhita Sun from JNQ regarding any operations from uh, India. Uh, primarily uh, from Delhi, we have been operating since past 10 years. And from Mumbai, it, uh, it has been uh, since past 15 years. Uh, and uh, Chennai, we had recently uh, introduced in the year 2019, but due to unfortunate circumstances, because of the COVID. They are doing. So I'll just uh, go through the contents of uh, this presentation from our end is uh, we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about the uh, on upon areas and the program, COVID program that we have uh, recently launched that is known as NAK Promise. We'll be also talking about the ANA Future Promise, uh, the special handling measures during the COVID period, uh, the alliances that we have uh, with uh, the <coughs> various carriers internationally and uh, in domestic circuit. Apart from that, we'll be talking about the ANA network, both international and domestic. Uh, and we'll be sharing uh, our uh, connectivity from India to Japan. And thereafter, uh, we'll be closing it down with the product and services that we provide from here. Uh, <laughs> regarding uh, the NA accolades and ACP, ACP that I I'll just uh, elaborated further. It is a NA care promise that is an initiative uh, being taken by the company, the group company during the uh, unfortunate uh, circumstances of the pandemic. And uh, under this uh, NA care promise, uh, we make you travel safe uh, and relaxing as much as possible. And uh, we have implemented the ACAP, that is the NA career promise, which is a commitment of quality standards to all our valuable customers to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Uh, we will ensure and continue to work on preventive measures in accordance with the lens uh, of prevention of novel coronavirus infections in the aviation sector. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on this social situation and listening closely to the voices of our customers and feedback from them. And we will take appropriate action uh, in each case to provide all customers with a safe and clean environment and services. Uh, this will give you an idea how we are taking care of the health and hygiene of our valuable customers. Uh, you can see that uh, in the picture in the slides that uh, we have installed the HIPAA filters uh, in all our cabin. Uh, which ensures the purest uh, <coughs> uh, form of uh, air 
uh, which is uh, approximately 99.97%. It collects the particles of 0.3 microns and larger, uh, larger which will ensure uh, uh, the perfect and uh, perfect and pure air uh, to everyone inside the cabin. Uh, we are the uh, first uh, uh, airlines in the world to install world's uh, hands-free laboratory doors. By hands-free, we, uh, we mean to say that instead of using your hands, you can just unlatch it uh, by using your elbow or wrist. So this is the world uh, first airlines to install the hands-free laboratory doors. And apart from that, uh, to ensure the safety and comfort and the health and hygiene of our passengers, uh, we have taken certain initiative like the uh, cocktail stair stick, which used to be of plastic, has been uh, remade with bamboo. And apart from that, the dessert cup uh, has been uh, replaced by porcelain. Earlier, we used to have plastic. Uh, and the in-flight uh, meal trays that was used to be of plastic now has been changed into biodegradable material known as bagasse. Uh, regarding the uh, further initiative of uh, to, for the health and hygiene and the uh, global environment, uh, there is an initiative taken by the group company uh, as ANA Future Promise. Uh, the new slogan will encompass uh, ANA Group's various activities across environmental, uh, social responsibility and governance areas. And the airline will utilize this slogan to raise awareness and promote ESG initiative. By ESG, we mean environment, social governance. So you can uh, go to our website for the further detailed uh, introduction of uh, this uh, particular incentive. Uh, okay. uh, further uh, in uh, this initiative uh, by the uh, group company launching the ANA Future Promise website, uh, go to the ANA Sky Web and you can just click onto that particular link and you'll have a detailed uh, material over there. Uh, regarding the special handling during the COVID measures, still, uh, as you must be aware that uh, Japan is quite restrictive when it comes to a border control. Uh, so at present, uh, uh, in case if a passenger wants to travel to Japan, he or she has to uh, get a, a RT-PCR done 72 hours prior to the flight departure. So this is a format onto which uh, the passenger needs to fill up the form, which is submitted at the airport or the uh, there is a application known as my SOS, which, uh, where you have to upload this. So this is just a general formality uh, for uh, Japan uh, visit uh, at present. Uh, from the airline side that uh, we have taken the initiative is that uh, we have uh, an ongoing promotion of no change fee. Let's say in case of a passenger who has freshly issued the ticket, uh, and he or she might have to do a multiple changes because of the uh, change of the itinerary or anything, any enforcement uh, circumstances. So as an airline, we are not charging anything, but this uh, particular promotion is still 30th of June only. So we haven't extended it as yet, but uh, we'll just update you all as soon as we'll uh, have some kind of updation regarding the extension of no change fees uh, as a promotion. Apart from that, we have been taking the special handling for cancelled flight in expansion of the COVID-19. We are giving the waiver to uh, waiver to the such uh, tickets which has been cancelled due to ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So you can contact our reservation in case uh, any of such tickets are coming for the cancellation uh, because of this COVID situation. Uh, talking about the uh, uh, alliance, we are a proud uh, member of Star Alliance with all the major airlines of uh, the world, like uh, your uh, Austrian Airlines, Copa Airlines, Avianca, United Airlines, Turkish, Thai, Singapore, and multiple other airlines. And inside, and in the domestic uh, circuit, we are a partner of uh, uh, Air India and. Air Vistara. So we have a very good connectivity with them and we have got an internet agreement because uh, we have a two-piece concept uh, uh, for Japan. So uh, in case if the passengers are booking uh, with Air India and Vistara for the domestic circuit Pan India, they can have that privilege of taking up <coughs> your uh, uh, two baggage piece concept.
uh, talking about the ANA network, uh, with this uh, slide, you can see that uh, ANA from uh, Japan has got an extensive international connectivity. Uh, this is the data uh, as of on October 2021. Uh, in Europe, we are connecting to 12 cities. In Asia Pacific region, we are connecting to 28 cities. And in Americas, we are connecting to 11 cities uh, from Tokyo. Tokyo has got two airports. One is Haneda and the other one is Nareta. But at present from Delhi, we are operating uh, from Delhi to Haneda only. From Mumbai, we do have our operations to Narita. In case if we talk about the uh, Pan Japan uh, domestic connection, uh, you can uh, see the web that has been created because we are the largest uh, connecting airlines uh, within the Japan. So we are connecting to 53 Japanese cities within Japan, which includes your Hiroshima, Okinawa, Kansai, Itami, and uh, multiple other destinations. Uh, now, this slide, uh, uh, I'll just discuss about the connectivity from India to Japan, which all points we cover. Uh, we were, uh, uh, we were uh, operating from Delhi, Mumbai and Chennai, but as I told you that due to unforeseen circumstances, Chennai uh, route has been uh, uh, temporarily suspended for the time being. At present, we are only operating from Delhi and Mumbai. So this is the connectivity. Uh, earlier, we used to have a daily flight from both the, uh, both the cities, that is Delhi and Mumbai. But uh, since the outbreak of the pandemic, we have reduced our frequencies at, the, at present uh, till 30th of June. So we'll be coming up shortly with the new schedule at a later stage. Uh, from Delhi, uh, we are operating on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And similarly, uh, on the way back from Haneda, we are uh, operating on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. The departure timing from Delhi will be at 6 p.m. in the evening, which gets into uh, Haneda at 5.55 the next morning. On the way back, we have a flight at 9.40 in the morning that uh, reaches Delhi at 3.55. And from Mumbai, uh, we are operating on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. The flight will be leaving from Mumbai at 19.40, that is 7.40 p.m., reaching the next day at uh, Narita at 7.50 in the morning. And on the way back, we have a, a departure at 11.10 in the morning that reaches uh, Mumbai at 5.35. So as I told you that uh, we have suspended our uh, Chennai to Narita flight uh, uh, till further notice, but I'll just share, do, share uh, with you the uh, departing and the departure and the arrival time at uh, Narita. From Chennai, we used to have a departure uh, at 20.30 hours at 8.30 p.m. And we used to arrive at 7.35 in the next morning. On the way back, we used to have a flight at 11.20 that we used to get in, uh, into Chennai at 5.45. So this is the connectivity uh, schedule. Uh, talking about the uh, domestic transit, as uh, this event is for uh, to promote the adventure tourism, so I'll cover most of the destinations that uh, Nibhidita San has already covered. So let's say in case of a passenger who is traveling all the way from Delhi to Haneda, the onward connectivity to, let's say, uh, Okinawa. The Okinawa flight uh, will be departing at 7.35. And the minimum uh, uh, international to domestic connectivity is 80 minutes only. So we are uh, connecting. 7.35 in the morning and uh, reaching uh, Okinawa at 10.35. And the, on the way back, uh, uh, just for the way back, the Okinawa is a, a slight, uh, uh, has got an issue because the early morning flight uh, departs from there at 6.50 that gets into uh, uh, your <coughs> Haneda at a later stage where you'll, you won't be able to connect to the Haneda daily flight at 9.40. So that's why I have taken an uh, example of in case of passengers returning from Okinawa. Uh, so he or she might take the evening flight at 21.20 and get a, which gets into uh, Haneda at 23.30, that is 11.30 p.m. So that they can take the next day morning flight. So you can plan out your itinerary wherein uh, you can take a uh, one night stay at Tokyo as well in case of a passenger is uh, willing to take that uh, particular stay at Tokyo for shopping and everything. In case if uh, the passenger wants to travel to the Alpine route, which is primarily your Tateyama uh, Kurobe, so the, they can take the transit example at Toyoma. 
Toyoma, uh, the flight will living will be leaving uh, from Haneda at quarter past ten in the morning, reaching at eleven fifteen at Toyoma, and on the way back the flight will be leaving at uh, seven ten and reaching Haneda at quarter past eight, which will be, be connecting with the nine forty flight uh, for Haneda to Delhi. In case if you have got some passengers who will be traveling from other destinations, uh, other cities apart from Delhi, so you can take up uh, uh, the connectivity of uh, Air Vistara and Air India. Let's say in case if a passenger who is coming all the way from <coughs> uh, Kolkata, because Kolkata at present doesn't have any direct flight to uh, Japan. So he or she can uh, take the Kolkata Delhi flight at 25 with Air India, which gets uh, at Delhi at 12.55 and the onward connecting would be at 6 p.m. for Delhi uh, to Haneda. And on the way back, in case if the passenger wants to take the Delhi Kolkata flight, so they can uh, depart from uh, Haneda at 9.40, gets into Delhi at 5, uh, 3.55 p.m. and we uh, can take the onward connection to Kolkata at 8.30 p.m. Just for your notice that uh, all the passengers arriving at Delhi by uh, NH837 has to collect their baggage from the conveyor belt and have to do a recheck-in at the uh, 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 terminal of, air, of Delhi airport. Uh, talking about the project and services, that's the last slide that we have. Uh, we have a configuration of uh, 787, as we, we told you that uh, we are operating with the 787 Dreamliner 900 series. We, uh, the total capacity of the flight is 246 seats, onto which uh, 40 seats are in business class, 14 seats are in premium economy, and 192 seats are in economy class. This will give you a, a fair idea as how our business class uh, looks. Uh, we have got a USP of our business class as we have an aisle for everyone. Through this uh, picture, you can see that we have got a, a staggered uh, airline config, uh, staggered seating configuration and a, a business class, which is one by two by one. So that means that the other passenger sitting next to you doesn't have to disturb you and you can walk freely. So that's the USP of uh, ANA uh, business class. And we have got a fully flag back, which is 180 degrees and so on. And uh, onto the pair storage for your luxury customers, we have got a plenty of storage for our passengers and so on. Coming on to the premium economy, uh, <laughs> we have got 14 seats in this premium economy. The USP of our premium economy, apart from our seat page and very spacious uh, leg room and uh, leg rest, uh, we have got some enhanced services from the business class that is being served into your premium economy as well. So like sparkling wine, the business class, class red and white wine, and sake, soup, etc. Et and we are also giving our premium economy customers with, with a priority baggage tag uh, during their arrival and departure. Talking about the economy class, uh, we have got 192 seats in our economy class which has got 34 inches seat pitch with a more leg room. And we have got a 10.6 inch LCD monitor, uh, LCD touch monitor with a wide monitor panel, which includes your Indian uh, audiovisual contents as well. And uh, we do have a uh, certain breadth of business class, which is also being served in your economic class. Uh, regarding our uh, catering partner, uh, our catering partner is the Taj Westin. And uh, our speciality being a Japanese carrier is a Japanese meal served on board. But apart from that, we have finest uh, Indian cuisine ranging from non veg veg, including your Jain meals. And uh, the business class passengers can pre order their preferred meal. And for this, you can uh, pre order uh, the meal from our ANA website. Uh, thank you so much uh, for hearing me out and uh, just uh, being a very uh, supportive uh, audiences for us. And in case of any uh, sales inquiry, you can connect uh, with me. I'll just uh, drop in my uh, email ID and contact number at the chat box. And in case for any agency query uh, uh, regarding any reservations or anything, I'll also share the reservation email ID onto uh, the chat box itself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I hope I've got your name correctly this time. So, uh... So now we have uh, uh, the presentation from uh, Attractive Japan and from Experiences for five minutes.
each and uh, followed by uh, Q&A for five minutes. So uh, calling uh, Japan, uh, Attractive Japan for the presentation. Sure, okay, thank you, Matindi. So I'm going to make it short and sweet. Okay, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Hiroki Sato. I'm working for the company called Attractive Japan. So I'm just going to briefly explain about who we are and what we do. So I'm just going to share the screen. So hold on a second, please. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to make it larger. Oh, sorry, sorry. Here we go. Okay, uh, can everyone see my screen? The guy, okay, using kayak. Okay, anyway, so let's start. So we are Attractive Japan based in Tokyo, Japan. And we are a quite new company founded only nine years ago in 2013. And as I mentioned first, we started as a, a development company, development consultant, I should say, to work with local government and local vendors to regenerate areas. So that's why we have quite a lot of program countryside. And our, as I mentioned, our headquarters in Tokyo and we have branch in Hiroshima. And we also have quite a few regional staff in Aichi, Osaka, Fukuoka. And the reason I mentioned this picture is, it's, I think that picture sort of represent who we are and also what we do. Yes, I don't know how many of you have been in Japan. That is actually a picture taken in Miyajima. That is a famous tree, uh, tree gate of Itsukushima Shrine and outside of Hiroshima city. So we are uh, offering these kinds of uh, activities and also we are uh, conducting a tour in countryside, uh, countryside like this. So that's why I chose this picture for this occasion. And of course, we have quite a good lots of program in Hiroshima region as well. Okay, and we are specializing in regional tourism development in a sustainable manner. We always consider this one, it's, this is one of the key elements to promote the tourism. And because the values is like Abraham Lincoln, of the local people, by the local people, for the local people. This is our motto. And we are trying to feature the hidden gems of Japan. So maybe we should say of the beaten track destinations. And we are also offering authentic Japanese experiences. And most importantly, we are encouraging interaction between international visitors and the local people. And of course, this is one of the key issues nowadays because of the pandemic. So we are very aware of the health and safety measures. So obviously that's conducted by Japanese government. Of course, some of them you may have heard about current uh, entry situation. Of course, so we are aware of it. So we are following Japanese government uh, policy. So we are conducting temperature check, mask required, uh, hand sanitizer available, and also transportation vehicles we use for these uh, particular tours regularly sanitized. And our specialty, uh, our specialties are follows. We are first offering cultural experience and activities. Cultural activities means like traditional culture, tea ceremony, kimono, craft making, samurai experience, and so on. Food and beverage, Japanese sakibirari visit, cooking class, bar hopping, and still more. And probably today's main topic, outdoor activities. We are finding quite a lot of outdoor activities such as sports related, like cycling, canoeing, walking, hiking, winter sports, and you name it. And agriculture and nature, like farm tours, fruit picking, camping, and nowadays, grumping. And I guess I may say that many times, but countryside experiences, we are using local services and knowledge because we are uh, focusing on country uh, community-based tourism. So we are trying to connect travelers and locals, and we are highly valued uh, local people as a stakeholder of the tourism development. So I'm just going to give you some example of these outdoor activities we are conducting. This is one of them, Shimanami Kaido cycling tour and local workshop experience. So Shimanami Kaido is uh, large street and uh, not street highway between Honshu mainland and also Shikoku, one of the four main islands in Japan. 
And it's not only featuring cycling, we are also featuring a uh, visit to local shops, local high street, and then uh, maybe interaction with local keep and shopkeepers. And this area is also very scenic, as you can see in this picture. And you can enjoy the view of set inland sea, both nighttime and daytime. And this is where Shimanami uh, Kaido is located. So this is Japan, uh, Hiroshima, uh, Honshu is this side, north, and Shikoku is south side. There are three bridges between Honshu and Shikoku, and Shimanami Kaido is here, most westerly located among three. It's quite close to Hiroshima city. So yes, this is a sort of picture of actual tour. So yes, we are using e-bike. So it is very easy for beginners or not those who are not used to driving, uh, riding bicycle on a daily basis. And yeah, as you can see, yes, they are communicating with new people and of course they are trying local food and you can visit the local craft shops and chatting with the owner of the shop. And this is the daytime and this is nighttime. It's a very scenic place and quite uh, warm in the winter as well. And next one, we have quite a few sub program, but this is one example in Hiroshima city. Hiroshima is quite famous as a water city because there are so many rivers and canals. So this is quite unique because most cases, if you visit like Peace of Memory Museum or Avon uh, Dome, you can go by public transport or coach. But this one, then you can see that uh, you can enjoy the scenery from the, the river. Of course, no crowd, no jam, or no queue. So, ex okay, you, so you can experience the landscape with the remains of the city from the water. Yeah, like this. Obviously, uh, we also offer uh, instruction and conduct before the start, to a start. So even beginner can enjoy that. And of course, this is good uh, fun opportunity for like teenager like this, or even smaller one. A minimum age to join the tour like this is from, I think it's from eight years old. So school children can also do it, maybe with parents. And we have quite a lot of uh, a trekking and hiking tour. This one is Miyajima, uh, same places as I've uh, covered over this slide. Miyajima means island of God. And yes, entire island is dedicated to uh, God or, Sh or Shinto shrine. And it's quite hilly and high mountain. So if you go up, you can enjoy the spectacular view of Seto Inland Sea. And on the, on the way, you can uh, you can visit quite a few temples as well. And this is the entrance of Miyajima Island, same picture as the first one, a uh, shrine. Okay, and this is the itinerary of a uh, golden route. I guess it has been already introduced by GNTO. Tokyo, Mount Fuji Hakone Man National Park, Kyoto, Osaka, and here. From Kyoto, Osaka, you can visit these places by train. It takes only two hours. So it's not disruption, it's not diversion. It, is, can, it can be the part of the uh, tour to include these places. So it's very easy for you to fit these places into your existing itinerary. Next one, a cycling tour, another cycling tour, but it is more mountainous area. Nakasendo is one of the remaining uh, main passages between Tokyo and Kyoto during the medieval time, like 16th or 17th, 18th centuries. Uh, this is one of the few areas which remains as it is before. I don't know, maybe some of you, some of you may have seen 1990s film called Last Samurai, starred by Tom Cruise. Actually, that film, feature these areas. So we are opening the cycling tour in this area. Yeah, as you can see, this is very traditional high street. And of course you can feel it, you can ride bike to the countryside. Of course, you can also join the walking tour as well if you prefer walking to cycling. And again, this is between Tokyo and Kyoto, main places. So you can easily include these places to your existing itinerary. Just going to change the subject. So Japan is quite a long stretch country. And if you go to the northern, northern part, like Hokkaido or Tokyo area, you see the lots of snow. 
And snow activity is very popular, especially like people from Western country who are coming to Japan for skiing or snowboarding or something. But don't worry, if you don't snow skiing, we can also have snow sledge. And these people actually just fishing on the frozen lake and that is out and after. So that is easy for beginner or who are not comfortable with uh, doing skiing. And similar things, this is snow mobile. So you can join the tour and taking uh, enjoying the spectacular view. This is covered with snow. And that is actually forest you know, during summertime. And it's not Hokkaido, this is Sendai Air, uh, okay, Tohoku. Uh, Zao Mountain, which is also famous for skiing as well, but it takes only 90 minutes by train from Tokyo. And finally, uh, just send the subject to the south. I think Janet had explained about Okinawa. Okinawa is one of the uh, main, uh, not mainland, that is a small island between Kyushu and Taiwan. So it's Japan's only tropical island. And yeah, it doesn't look like Japan. Many people maybe don't realize Japan has these kind of places, but actually Japan's snorkeling is one of the best in the world. So, and also it's very uh, warm even in the winter, so you can enjoy these kinds of water activities throughout the year. Yeah, this is where Okinawa is located, so the southwest of Japan, so south of mainland Japan, I should say, and it's quite close to Taiwan and China. Yeah, these are one of the examples. So we can offer something more because we are used to offering custom-made itineraries. If you have a question, please contact us. I'm going to uh, send my message, uh, my, my email address uh, uh, chat box. So that's all. Thank you much for your attention. And I hope you have a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sato. Uh, I would like to now call upon the experiences team for their presentation. A quick one, five minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll just share the screen with you. Uh, just for one sec. Uh, do you see, do you see the screen now? Okay, so uh, we are the company called Experiences, and we started as creating only high quality experiences for uh, high net worth individuals. Um, and we just keep creating the experiences that is uh, memorable for a lifetime. And uh, before COVID, we attended a lot of, you know, VIPs and VVIPs from all over the world. And uh, those people are including Hollywood Star, uh, as I mentioned, and, uh, you know, CEO, uh, listed companies, et, et cetera. And um, for them, we have provided them with uh, special experiences uh, in holding weddings or uh, booking hotels. Um, our business model is pretty simple. So we create the experiences and sell these unique experiences to uh, travel agencies uh, like you guys and uh, uh, sell the experiences to their clients. Or uh, if you're, uh, you know, if the travel agency's um, uh, client has a special request on a special experiences in Japan, then uh, we can arrange the uh, unique experiences for your clients. And, uh, um, uh, we have network uh, with about uh, 500 comp uh, companies all over the world. Um, uh, we used to have like much more, but uh, since you know uh, COVID, we just uh, decreased the number of uh, uh, you know the connection with the uh, um, uh, outside company. And uh, for today, uh, I would like to share two adventure tourism for you guys. Um, so during COVID, uh, we um, uh, have created some uh, tours for activity tourism. And uh, first, um, as, uh, you know, JNTO uh, Nibirito-san Nibir Nibir and also uh, Attractive Japan uh, uh, told you guys about the Hiroshima. Um, uh, we also have a Hiroshima plan. And uh, for this plan, we have collaborated with uh, Utopia Saito, which is, uh, which operate, uh, you know, top ski uh, resort. Um, and provide a luxury mountain uh, activity program. Uh, so this, this can be a part of, uh, you know, also uh, you know, educational uh, mountain activities where uh, parents can have time for education in the nature by uh, experiencing the, uh, this plan together with their ch uh, children. 
And uh, you know, these days, uh, the major companies in Japan started uh, focusing on the children's uh, ed education more. So uh, this is a good uh, chance for the for the guests to uh, do this kind of activity in the very unique outside activities. And uh, we have uh, three different uh, models, uh, and each contains different menu. Uh, of course, best contains everything, and uh, the good model, uh, you know, contains less. And uh, since we provide best experiences, our guests will be transported by a helicopter. And uh, the guests can look at the beautiful scenery of Hiroshima and go to uh, you know, Utopia Saito. Um, and uh, depending on the models, uh, we provide a special barbecue or, uh, and collaborate with the local food lab, uh, the company called a, a local food lab. Uh, who is specialized in uh, providing outdoor um, restaurant experiences and also catering and at the campsite um, in there. And uh, for uh, for the bar uh, for the barbecue menu, of course, uh, we are able to provide a vegetarian menu as well. Um, so since uh, this is a local production and local conception model, uh, you know this can be uh, used as a food education program. Um, so after the meal, uh, the guests can enjoy the buggy experiences, uh, like something like this one. And uh, uh, here as well. So uh, which uh, uh, makes the plant, uh, you know, more uh, more towards more towards uh, adventure tourism. Uh, also, depending on the model, uh, at the level of one thousand meter, uh, we provide the natural stargazing experiences uh, to go there. Um, the guests. Uh, we'll use a buggy and uh, climb up the uh, you know hills uh, in the ski resort, um, and also uh, depending on the model, uh, we provide the vegetarian food uh, menu where uh, its uh, uh, ingredients are made in the temple itself. So this experience uh, can be held in a in a temple. And uh, another um, plan that we have is a cycling, uh, you know, it's kind of like a lecture uh, experience with uh, Japan's top cycling uh, racing team in Utsunomiya Tochigi. Uh, so uh, I don't have the map, but um, um, the Tochigi is uh, in, in the Kanto area near uh, Tokyo. Uh, it takes about, I think, like two hours from uh, uh, away from Tokyo. Um, so this uh, this time we came up with uh, Utsunomiya uh, Britain, uh, which is a uh, pro cycle uh, uh, road racing team. Uh, so uh, we actually customize the plan according to the guest needs, and uh, you know the basic concept is, is to improve a uh, the skills of the cycling with the uh, coaches and uh, athletes. Um, so those athletes uh, went to the Olympic Games. So. Uh, this is really a top, uh, you know, uh, athletes in Japan. Uh, so um, after the a little training, we actually uh, go to the you know cycling course um, that's uh, using the road uh, road race uh, with athletes uh, by choosing th from uh, three courses. So basic uh, basic courses is just uh, you know beginners course. And uh, uh, we do have like uh, you know two other courses like you know road race co uh, courses, and uh, it's kind of like more towards like a nature uh, you know courses. And uh, after cycling, the guests can just uh, go to spa and uh, take a rest in there. Uh, so this is just an option, but uh, we have the partnership with uh, Fairfield uh, by Mario uh, you know Tochi Utsunomiya. So uh, if the guests uh, can stay in there, then that's totally uh, you know fine with us. And uh, that's it for the presentation. And thanks for listening. Um, I will drop off the uh, the contact information for uh, in a, of, uh, of mine uh, in the in the chat. So you can contact me anytime or uh, to Nibetitsan uh, at Jane Hill. So uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Shimizu. Uh, now the house is open for question and answers. So if anybody has any questions uh, for the speakers, please do raise your hand. And I do see a couple of questions already there in the chat box. Uh, Nivedita, would you like to address them? I already sent the answers to them personally. I mean, just by 
tagging their names in the chat box. Any other questions that you have for the speakers? How's uh, Miss, I am Mr. Mehta from Translocus Gujarat Rajkot. Hello. Yes, yes, Sanjasan, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Now, Japan. Can you put has... on your camera? Can you switch yeah, on? Yeah, your... sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I think some uh, privacy things is not allowing. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, huh. my question is. Uh, Japan tourist visa, uh, which has opened up saying that if you are taking a itinerary from a vendor from Japan, then only you can do a tourist visa. Is it true? Uh, the thing is, uh, first of all, um, Indians are still not allowed to travel in the purpose of tourism. Indians exactly. are allowed for student and business. <coughs> and you have to use our DMC, our Japanese DMC. <coughs> Could you hear me? You have to use a Japanese DMC. Okay. And now... you have to arrange a group travel. FIT is still not allowed. Oh, so that was my concern. Mm -hmm. Is FIT open up or it's still not open up? Group travel. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is going on an exchange program, say from a student university. Travel. That is student uh, travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for a short time course. Are they allowed or even they are yeah, not? Th allowed? That is a different, right? That is a different kind of visa, right? That is student travel, student visa. So you have to apply for a student visa in that case. Yeah, but uh, Japanese embassy is asking for a specific uh, certificate from Japan. Uh, okay. which is uh, known as uh, ERFS. Mm -hmm. Now, I still am not able to understand mm -hmm. how can a Japanese uh, invitee give some certificate on which an Indian traveler would get a uh, invitation, I mean, a uh, visa. I mean, okay, whatever. So that is uh, actually, this is totally the, uh, the scope is with the... Hmm. The uh, embassy, and uh, we do not have much say in the visa thing. So you definitely will have to coordinate with, with the embassy. Only, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great, yeah. great. And uh, uh, other thing, mm -hmm. there are uh, now. This is pertaining to the airline. So mm -hmm. uh, can the uh, gentleman from the airline can help me in answering? Uh, okay, uh, Sanjay San, uh, this is Robin from Omnipon Airways Daily. Uh, yes, yeah. you can. Uh, we can allocate you the ticket stock, uh, but primarily, as I have already uh, shared with you, that uh, uh, we do have a Mumbai office. So I'll share the uh, contact number and details of our Mumbai sales team because Gujarat oh. falls in their jurisdiction. So you can contact them for the uh, ticket allocation and so on. Okay. Okay. Great. That I appreciate. Another thing, Mr. Robin, if we have a students traveling to Canada and US, and if they are just to transit uh, Japan in the same airport, I assume they are allowed to travel on ANA. True, true. Do they require yes, any they COVID test before boarding the flight since they are just transiting Japan? No, I uh, see currently the guidelines of each and every country uh, with the third country has been changed. Let's say uh, I'll take an example of US. Uh, just uh, uh, before 10th of June, there was a mandate uh, mandate for the COVID passengers that uh, the for US bound traffic, in case you are traveling from a third country, RTPCR report of within 24 hours of the travel gate was mandatory, which has yeah. been revised from 11th of June. So exactly. simultaneously at present, there is no requirement, but sim simultaneously for the Canadian government, I think it is still there. For okay. again, for that purpose, because uh, being a carrier, we really can't give you a fair idea or knowledge about the quarantine process and everything and the visa part. So uh, as uh, Nivedan San has already uh, shared with you, so please contact the particular uh, embassy of that particular uh, uh, city or a country. Great, great. And uh, for passengers traveling to Japan on ANA, 
do they require rt pcr or now it has been scrapped no they do they do require uh, within 72 hours of the flight departure they do need oh. to have though they have a vaccination certificate with uh, two and a booster dose then also exactly only for oh. the booster dose i'll just give you a uh, information only there are certain uh, booster doses vaccine that is pfizer moderna astrazeneca and covovax which are allowed for a quarantine free travel in japan but uh, unfortunately covovax in uh, in india has a, is still on a trial basis so uh, in case of a passenger who has taken covaxin or covishield so they have to uh, serve that uh, minimum of 3 days uh, home quarantine or institutional quarantine oh okay great great just uh, for everybody's information the ambassador to india was from rajkot mr chinoy few years back so that's how we are always eager to promote japan i mean since we had one important person in japan uh, from rajkot representing as an ambassador to india thank you so much for <laughs> your support no thank no you. my pleasure miss any other questions that we have please raise your hands well i don't see any so uh, that brings us to the end of this webinar vinaksha would you like to add something well uh, yeah uh... uh i would say it was a good session thank you sonam and uh, yes thank you team jntu for giving us this lovely introduction to japan the land of endless discovery as you promoted the webinar indeed was exciting and has uh, pushed us uh, all of us to to go on for our next adventure holiday at the earliest i thank all of you uh, over the zoom and various social media handles who are attending us and thank you for taking out time from your busy schedules thank you nivedita for for taking this initiative we hope you all enjoyed and and are leaving this session a bit more interested about japan nivedita has shared her contacts uh, in earlier of the part of the session and you all can get in touch with her and of course atu i can always be the platform in case you need our support to streamline the things atu is always there for the members thank you all wish you a lovely evening Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care, Thank everyone. You. Thank please, you. Thank you. Please, please Thank don't you. hesitate to uh, contact us for any further developments. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.